This video will go over the basic steps of building a model in Dyrobes. The objective is to demonstrate how a model can be built from scratch. We will start by creating a new shaft model in the Dyrobes rotor program. This will involve specifying shaft material, building the shaft elements, and adding bearings to the model. After our model is built, we will use it to analyze the rotor dynamic characteristics of the shaft and bearings. Once the analysis has been performed, we will interpret the results using the post-processing capabilities in Dyrobes. We will be modeling a small shaft that rotates at speeds up to 25,000 RPM. The shaft is supported radially by two fluid film bearings. There is also a 14 kilogram disc mounted at the center of the section with a 50 millimeter diameter. To get started, we need to open the Dyrobes rotor program. We can adjust our window so that we can still see the background cross section. First step will be to go to the data editor. This is where most of the modeling information is stored. Set the unit system to option four, engineering metric units. Also, provide some sort of description for the model to document what the model is for. The next step is to specify materials. On the Material tab, we can enter the basic materials that define our shaft. Because we are using steel for this model, we can enter the basic properties for steel in these fields shown here. It is also possible to select from a list of predefined materials to automatically input the properties. After the materials have been defined, the next step will be to go to the Shaft Elements tab. Inserting the shaft elements will allow us to build our shaft model one piece at a time. We will start from the left end of the shaft and work our way to the right. The very first segment of the shaft is conical. We will ignore that fact for now and just model it as being cylindrical with a diameter of 13 millimeters. All of the data for the shaft elements are entered in this table. The information on this row says that element 1, sub-element 1, will use the first material. It will be defined on the base level. The element will have a 4 millimeter length, zero inner diameter, which implies that the element is solid, a 13 millimeter outer diameter, and the stiffness and mass elements will have the same diameter. For the second segment, we can see that the length is 30 millimeters and the diameter is 26 millimeters. For this section, we may want to use two elements. So instead of making a single element that is 30 millimeters long, we'll make two elements that are each 15 millimeters long. The data can be entered the same way as before. Because we are making two identical elements, we can now enter the same information below for the third element. Okay. 
As we are creating the shaft elements, we can stop and view them at any time. To do this, press close, allow the program to save. Now we can see the three elements that we have created so far. We can continue building our model by going back to the Shaft Elements tab. The next section of our shaft has a diameter of 38 millimeters and a length of 26 millimeters. We can enter this data the same way as before. The remainder of the shaft elements will be created by using the same process. We will skip to the completed shaft model now. Now that we have skipped ahead to the completed shaft model, you can see how each element is defined in the shaft elements table. If you would like, you can pause the video here and compare how the data in the table matches up with the dimensions on the drawing. If we close the data table, we can get a visual comparison and see how the model schematic resembles the drawing. As a first attempt, we modeled the two elements at the ends as cylindrical. However, the drawing shows that they are conical. We can change these elements to be conical by adjusting the information in the Shaft Elements tab. Again, we'll navigate to the Shaft Elements tab. The trick to making conical elements in diarobes is to place a negative sign in front of the sub-element number, just like this. This is how you tell diarobes that you want a conical element here. The other number that we're going to have to change is this last entry in the table. Now what this element says is that it'll be a conical element based on this negative sign this zero means that the left end of the element has a zero inner diameter. The 13 means that the left end of the element has an outer diameter of 13. This zero says the right end of this element has an inner diameter of zero. And this number says that the outer diameter of the right side of this element is 26. We can do the same thing for the right end of the shaft. All we have to do is change this number to be negative. And we will also have to change this number from 13 to 26. Now what we will have is a conical element because we have a negative number here. And we have also changed the outside diameter at the left side of this element to be 26. We can see our updated model by closing the data editor. Now if we look at the ends of the shaft, it's clear that we have conical elements there. At the beginning of this video, it was stated that there's a 14 kilogram disc near the center of the shaft. We will now add this disc to our model. Go back into the data editor and select the Disks tab. In the Disks table, we will add a rigid disk, place it at station 8, and give it a mass of 14 kilograms. We will ignore the inertia for this example. We can now see the disk as a lump mass at station 8. Before we can run a lateral analysis, we need to add bearings. We can define bearings by opening the Data Editor tab and going to the Bearings tab. We know that our first bearing is located here. 
which corresponds to station 5. To keep things simple, let's assume that we have 88,000 newtons per millimeter stiffness. And let's assume that that's true in the x and the y direction. We'll also assume that this bearing is connected to a rigid structure, so we'll just leave the second station here as a zero. We can now add our second bearing. This bearing, we can see the center line is right here, which corresponds to station 11. So we'll specify station 11. Again, we'll assume this bearing is connected to a perfectly rigid structure, so we'll leave this as zero and it's copied over the 88,000 newtons per millimeter stiffness, so we'll accept that as well. If we close the data editor, we can now see our model has two bearings connected to the shaft. Now that we have completed the model, we can run a lateral analysis. To do this, select Analysis, Lateral Vibration, and we'll set the drop-down menu to option number two, critical speed analysis. Press run. The solution is reached very quickly. Now we can go to the post processor, select critical speed analysis, and choose mode shapes 2D. The first critical speed mode shape is generated. We can see that for this model, the first critical speed is at 26,233 RPM. We can also animate this mode shape to see the motion for this first critical speed. Thank you for watching this Dirobes video. Please contact us at info at if you have any questions.